Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to talk about scatter plots and correlation. Under this, I will be explaining explanatory and response variables, scatter plots, and correlation. First, response variables and explanatory variables. A response variable, also known as the dependent, or outcome variable measures an outcome of a study. An explanatory variable, also known as the independent or predictor variable, may explain or influence change in a response variable. Let me explain these two using some examples. Example 1 The amount of time a student spends studying for a statistics test and the grade of the test. You know, if you study a lot, you can make a good grade, a, bet, a better grade. Therefore, grade is the outcome. So, explanatory variable is the spend studying. And response variable is the grade. If I explain why, the grade is the result of the student studying. Example 2. A realtor used the size of a house to decide the price. Can you guess the explanatory variable? Yes, it is the size of a house. And response variable is the price. Why? The price depends on the size of a house. Okay, now is cut a plot. The most useful graph for displaying the relationship between two quantitative variables is a scatter plot. A scatter plot shows the relationship between two quantitative variables that are measured on the same individuals. We can describe the overall pattern of a scatter plot by the direction, form, and strength of the relationship. The last and important kind of departure is an outlier. An individual value that falls outside the overall pattern of the relationship. Yes, we can use a scatter plot to understand the relationship between two quantitative variables and direction and strength of the relationship too. And also, we can use a scatter plot to recognize some outliers. Let me explain this using this graph. We have x-axis and y-axis. So we use x-axis for the explanatory variables. Always explanatory variable should be on x-axis. And response variable should be on y-axis. We can make a point this way. So what is the value of x of this point? Here it is x1. Similarly, y value is y1. Then, how can we show the coordinate of this point? We can write down x1, comma y1. So here x1 is the x values of the point, y1 is the y value of the point. Similarly, we can make points like this. Now you see a graph with dots. Yes, this type of graphs are called scatter plot. This graph represents the relationship between x and y. Okay, let me explain first outliers. You see this red dot. Red dot is 
little bit far from the rest of the dots. So, this red can be an outlier because it is little bit far from the rest of dots. And also, you see these dots go in this direction. So, if you see dots are in this direction, then we call positively associated. It means this relationship of X and Y has positive relationship. And this one in other direction. You see this. So, this has negative relationship. It means negatively associated. Positively associated graph, you see when you increase x, x values, y values also increases. When you decrease x values, y values also decreases. But in this graph, you see when you increase x values, y value decrease. When you increase y values, x value decreases. So, I think you can understand the difference between negative and positive. Example, we have data from five retail stores. For each store, we have information about how long the store has been open and its average monthly sales. You know, we do have two variables, months open and sales. So, what is the explanatory variable and a response variable? Yes, according to this, months should be an explanatory variable and sales should be the response variable. Because you know the sales depend on the how long you open this store. So, how do we draw a scatter plot? First, we draw x and y and coordinates. Then, we take month open on x axis because it is the explanatory variable. And sales, $1000, it is on y axis. So, first one you see 40, 150. So, therefore, this should be the point 40, 150. Next one, 70, 250. Next, 120, 300. Next, 10 to 100. Last one, 50, 200. Therefore, this is the scatter plot for this data set. Next, measuring linear association. The correlation, notation simple r, measures the strength of the linear relationship between two quantitative variables. Yes, here we are going to talk about how to calculate the strength of the linear relationship between two quantitative variables. We have a nice equation r equal 1 over n minus 1, x1 minus x bar over sx, y1 minus y bar over sy, up to xn minus x bar over sx times yn minus y bar over sy. So here, x1, x2, xn are the data of x, y1, y2, yn are the values of y. So x bar is the average of x, y bar is the average of y, sx is the standard deviation of x data and standard deviation of y data is sy. So we can write down this equation in this form. Now let me explain an example. Here we do have two variables x and y. So, if we consider this, 
what do you think x1 yes x1 we can take 43 as a x1 x2 we can say 21 x3 57 x4 42 x5 59 x6 25 similarly y1 is 99 y2 is 65 y3 is 87 y4 75 y5 81 y6 79 so you can write down now coordinates 43 comma 99 21 comma 65 57 comma 87 like that okay what i do i use a table so I write x values, x1, 43, x2, 21, so on. Then I write y values. So I know we need to find the average of x, which is denoted by x bar. That is 41.17. Therefore, I use x minus x bar for this column. We know for the first one, x1 minus x bar, x1 is 43, and x bar is 41.17. Therefore, x1 minus x bar equal 1.83. Similarly, x2 is 21, x bar is 41.17, and you can get the answer, and you can do the same thing for this column. Next, I calculate the y bar, average of y, which is 81. So I use this column for y minus y bar. So same way what we uh, use for the x minus x bar, we can use y minus y bar to fill this column. Then, you know according to the equation, we need x1 minus x bar over sx. It means we have to divide this x minus x bar by standard deviation of x. If you calculate standard deviation of x, it should be 15.75. 15.75. If you don't know how to calculate, Please go back to my uh, previous video so you will understand how to find it. So here x minus x bar over sx. Therefore you can fill this column. Next you need y minus y bar over sy. So if you calculate sy which is the standard deviation of y values is 11.45 then you can fill this column according to that then according to the equation we need the multiplication of the last two columns so x minus x bar over sx time y minus y bar over sy therefore you can multiply these last two columns values which is 0.12 times 1.57 equal 0.18 negative 1.28 times negative 1.40 equal 1.79 so on then what I do I add the numbers of the last column which is 2.65 then I go back to the equation this is the equation we use so r equal 1 over n minus 1. What is the n? n equal 6 here because we do have 6 pair data and x1 minus x bar over sx time y1 minus y bar over sy plus up to x6 minus x bar over sx time y6 minus y bar over sy this summation should be 2.65. Therefore, you can plug the numbers to this equation. Then, r equal 1 over 6 minus 
1 time 2.65. Once you simplify this, you will get 0.53. So therefore, R equal 0.53. And you should keep in mind the maximum value of R is positive 1. The minimum value of R is negative 1. And R can be taken any value in between negative 1 to positive 1. Then interpreting linear correlation coefficient. Consider this. You see this has a positive linear relationship. And also all points are on a straight line. Therefore, we can say perfect positive linear correlation. If you calculate this, R should be equal to 1. This one, you see, not all the points are on the line, but some. Therefore, we can say strong positive linear correlation R equal 0.9. This one, you see we have, we don't have actually any point on the line, but close to line. Therefore, we can say weak positive linear correlation. Here we just say R equal 0.4. So you see now the positive direction. Next, perfect negative linear correlation. You see this in other direction, but all points are on the line therefore r should be equal to negative 1. Next, similarly what I explained before for the positive direction. So let me compare these two. You see the first one of the top and first one of the bottom has the same correlation. Therefore strength of these two relationships should be the same, but difference is the direction. So if you have this pattern on your scatter plot, then we can say no linear correlation. If it has no linear correlation, it should be R should be equal to zero. I hope you understand this video. In my next video, I am going to talk about the least squares method. Thanks for watching this video.